Welcome back. Super excited moving forward in this lecture. I'm going to demonstrate how to go about from within the Google Cloud Platform, right? Kubernetes environment. We are going to create an instance and then actually install GitLab Enterprise Edition. And then once that's installed, we're going to take a look at by going to gitlab.com. In fact, connecting to our instance through GitLab so that we have an environment at the back end, right? So to speak, the cloud platform at the back end. And then of course we have our GitLab environment where we can start to work with our application, maybe develop some additional code, merge some requests, push some changes, and so on. So let's jump right in. I'm logged on to the Google Cloud Platform. I'm gonna to navigate to my instances first so we can see what and different kinds of instances that we have. So let's go to Compute Engine, and this will list out all of the VMs for us. So for example, we created the GitLab instance. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new instance so that we can run through the entire process so you can actually follow along and understand what is actually happening. So just by clicking on creating a new instance, I know in the previous lectures we've seen how to create an instance, so I'm just gonna quickly run through this. So I'm going to say GitLab 2, that's my second instance. And this could be again production, this could be development, this could be QA, and that's how you want to be able to set up your environment, so to speak. And and let me assign you a homework. So go ahead and create these in instances. So you have two or three different instances. So this is going to be GitLab 2, for example. And I'm going to change, of course, the settings here for the Ubuntu. I'm going to spin off the latest version, which is 16.04, or not 16.04. I don't know why I keep saying 16.04, because I'm so used to that, right? It's actually 18.04, which is the latest version. And then the size of the disk is 40 gigabytes. I'm going to go ahead and select. Just scroll down, allow both kinds of traffic and then click create. So this is going to go ahead and spin up our instance called GitLab 2. And of course, we'll also get the external IP address shortly as soon as it's done creating. Great, so once our instance is created, notice we have the IP address, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and save this IP address. So I'm gonna copy this and bring up our notepad. And I'm gonna go ahead and just change the IP address here and later on we'll use it and I'll explain what that is once we actually go ahead and install the enterprise version of GitLab we will be needing these four commands okay but let's come back to that so I'm minimize this I just wanted to save the IP address at this point into this command you could save it anywhere else within your notepad all right, so all we've done so far is we've created a VM instance called GitLab2 and we have an IP address that we saved. Next, I'm gonna spin up the actual instance itself and click on the SSH and this will open up the actual instance so I can, my next step would be to install GitLab, okay? So let me expand that. It's going to take a few seconds to actually connect to the SSH server and we'll have the command line. Perfect. So it just gives me a welcome message. Welcome to Ubuntu 18.04, which is the latest version. And then, of course, gives me some details as well. So on this Ubuntu machine, I need to install GitLab Enterprise Edition. Let me increase the font here so you could actually see a bit better. Let me go ahead and clear the screen. Perfect. So to install GitLab, the first command that we need, this is where our commands are helpful, is of course, we always start with the sudo apt get update. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply copy this, right? And paste it. And what this is going to do is just going to get the latest version of the Ubuntu files, right? So if there are any additional packages or updates, it's going to make sure that I have the current version 
always reading the current package lists. So once that's completed, my next command is to get the sudo apt install. And this time I'm going to install the certificate, right? So this command is to install the open SSH server certificates. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste that, hit the enter key. And of course, this is also going to tell me that the CS certificate is already the newest version, which is already installed. If not, in your instance, if you're doing it for the first time, it's going to actually install and give it a number. So this is my second command. The third command is the post fix, which is for notification emails. Okay. So if you, if you choose to, you can. So I'm going to copy this and, of course, run this command as well. And this will bring me to a screen, which is just a simple configuration screen. And all I have to do is just select the general type of mail configuration, whether it's no configuration, internet site, internet with smart host, satellite system, or local. So we are going to choose internet site. And again, this is just a mail that is received directly using SMTP or by running a utility such as fetch mail. And outgoing mail is sent using the smart host and so it just gives you different options right since we chose internet site this is what's going to happen so mail is sent and received directly using smtp and that's using the internet with smart host right and that's the third option so we only selected this part as our option being the internet site now smtp is not configured yet right so nothing is configured all we're doing is just getting to a place where we are ready to install GitLab. All of these settings, SMTP, will be configured way later on. You can always configure it later on. But this time, it's just asking you which option that you like for during the installation process, right? So I'm going to select the Internet site, hit the Enter key, and this will give me the system mail name. I can change it. But I'm going to leave it as default, right? So it's gitlab2.c.siad5757.internal. Now, the mail name is the domain name used to qualify all mail addresses without a domain name. This includes mail to and from the root. Because once we're done with the installation of GitLab Enterprise Edition, the very first time we log on, we'll, we'll have to use the root as the admin name. So it also gives you a word of caution please do not make your machine send out mail from root example.org unless the root example.org has told you to do so and this name will also be used by other programs it should be a single fully qualified domain name thus if a mail address on the local host is in a certain format the correct value for this option would be example.org which is the actual domain name all right, so I'm going to leave it as is, the system mail name as default, hit the enter key, and this is going to install the email notification processes. Now, once that's completed and done, we will have to do the last step, which is, let me bring up the command here. So we are going to now do the curl command, and this is again installing the GitLab package. So this command will basically just add the GitLab package to the Ubuntu machine. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And then of course, let's run this and see what happens. So now the package itself is being installed on the Ubuntu machine on my instance at this point. And finally it says that the repository is set up. We can now install the packages. And our package, of course, is the last command here. And notice in this instance, all we're doing here is we're saying sudo external URL, which is this URL. And this is the URL that we're actually using for our instance, right? Remember, we copied this earlier. So this is our URL for the new instance that we created called GitLab2. And it's just going to do an apt get install, and this is the version. So we are going to install GitLab Enterprise Edition. 
and it is going to be installed on this particular instance and connect to this particular instance. So I'm going to copy this and then let's run this. So it's going to take a few minutes or so sometimes to actually run through the installation package. It's going to actually uh, read the package first and then install it. So it's going to unpack or it's going to prepare to unpack. It's going to unpack all the files and then it's going to install it. So it just takes a few minutes. It also tells you that it fetched about 466 megabyte, right? That's the size of this package that it's actually unpacking and then setting it up and then it's going to install. And you'll notice it runs through the entire process, right? Of all these directories. And again, I'm not actually showing you all of this entire process, right? So as it's installing, so when you actually do it as a homework or when you're actually trying to install, just gonna go through and just visualize and take a look at what exactly is is actually going through, right? Uh, but in my instance, in, in this particular lecture, I'm just gonna, you know, maybe just give you some pieces of this installed, right? So as you're going through the installation process, as you're watching this, you're just going to see pieces because I'm not gonna, it's gonna take a while to actually get it all installed. And the important thing to remember it, are these commands, right? So just want to make sure that you note these commands to install GitLab Enterprise Edition. And that's important. And I'm going to provide you these as a downloadable resource so you can actually take a look at and just copy these commands. And these are fairly straightforward, so they're not that difficult. So minimize this. All right, great. So it looks like finally our installation is complete. We have the package called GitLab dash ee which is the enterprise edition installed on our amd64 machine and this completes the process of getting gitlab installed so let me go ahead and actually restore this screen bring it in the center here minimize this for now and there we go so now on our gitlab 2 instance we have GitLab installed. So the next step is obviously take a look at how do we access the actual GitLab online, right? So if I were to click on this particular link or URL, right, which is 35226105.226, right? This is for the GitLab 2. So let me go ahead and click on it and see what happens. And this will navigate us to the actual URL. And sometimes it just takes time for it to actually configure and make sure we get our screen where we can log in to our GitLab account. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and refresh. It should take a minute or so. Okay, so this is why it's not picking up this instance, right, a GitLab. Even though our Enterprise Edition has been installed, it's because it by default uses HTTP, right? So not the secure hypertext transfer protocol because for HTTPS we need to reconfigure or do some additional configurations so I'm going to remove the S here and then hit the enter key and this time it should perfect so now we have our GitLab Enterprise Edition home page connected to this instance right this is our GitLab 2 instance running on Kubernetes so here by default I'm just going to change the password again or just give a new password so just make sure it's secure whichever password you use I'm going to go ahead and change the password and it will take me to a screen where now I can sign in and remember it's important the first time you sign in is root that's the admin that you will use to sign in and the password is of course the one that you just changed and if I click sign in it should take me to the dashboard of GitLab yay super excited so here now notice I am connected to my instance running on Kubernetes but yet I'm in GitLab so from here on out I can now create a new project clone repositories and continue on with my work right so whichever environment I'm connected in if not I can always change the environments 
For instance, let me in fact navigate to the settings area and kind of show you some of these things, right? Notice the SSH keys may not be installed once I create a new project. So I'd have to run through the same exercise again. I think we've practiced that um, in the previous lectures, but I may just demonstrate quickly so that you get comfortable. Once again, it's a practice for you. So within my user settings, of course, I can change the, the public avatar. I can choose the file, upload a new file, etc., and so on. Similarly, if I click on SSH keys, which is a requirement before you can actually start to run jobs using GitLab, is right now we don't have an SSH key. And here's a quiz for you. How do we generate these SSH keys? You got it. Perfect. So we need to use Git right so git bash is something that we use and I demonstrated that in previous lessons you simply open this up run a couple of commands it will generate a key for you and then you can enter the key here all right let's go back to our home page here so let's explore the GitLab configuration so I'm gonna click on GitLab configuration and it kind of gives you the a dashboard area where it tells you some of the areas that are configured notice shared runners are configured because these runners take your jobs to and back and forth right from from the server and and the GitLab environment so if you commit changes it's a runner's job to make sure it's done similarly it gives you the GitLab version the shell the API's workhorse Ruby rails and so on my projects at this point are none I do not have a project course I'm going to go ahead and create a new project similarly users groups runners jobs and so on so you can kind of take a look at this and gives you an idea within the admin area so let's go back to our GitLab homepage here or the dashboard itself and here you can create more groups projects and whatnot so let's go ahead and create a project so you can actually see what it looks like so as soon as I click new project notice by default the URL is the instance running on kubernetes root and then the project name so I'm gonna call this learning DevOps and create the project I could use template also right so notice as soon as it creates a project it gives me a warning I need to add the SSH key so I'm going to click on add SSH key, bring up my git bash here, make this bigger so you can actually see. And if you don't remember the commands, that's fine. Let's go up here to our notepad buddy, copy the first command, paste it, hit the enter key, it's going to generate the public private key. And we've done this before, okay? So I'm going to call this learning DevOps, and that's just a file name that uses to store those keys. And then to get the key, this is my second command. Paste it, and this is going to generate a key for me. And I'm simply going to copy the key and then go ahead and paste it within the SSH keys here. Add the key, and I should be good to go. Perfect. So now if I go back, I'm going to see my projects called the administrator learning DevOps and that's the master. And from here on out, I can create branches and so on. So I hope this helps a little longer lesson, but I think it's very important for you to understand how to spin up instances in Kubernetes using the Google Cloud Platform and installing GitLab on your Ubuntu machine. And then finally coming back to our dashboard. So practice couple of times. I hope this helps and let's move to the next lesson.